Since the last video, a few people have asked me to show how I set the shaper up to achieve the cope cuts that you see for the door parts. In this video, I'll show you exactly that, taking the shaper from no configuration to configured with the sled to make cope cuts. Although the techniques seen in this video are generic for all setups, whether it's a router table or other brand of shaper, the details are certainly specific to the Martin shapers and the Martin cope sled. The pneumatic clamps that you see are made by Mac Capture. They're his airtight clamps, and I love them for both safety and precision, not only on the shaper, but also on the sliding table saw. I'll put a link to his clamps in the comments. You can achieve cope cuts without a sled like this. Fundamentally, you need some way to secure the parts and pass them at an exact 90 degree angle across the cutter so that you get a square cut and the door glue up is square. We're very fortunate in our shop to have this incredible Martin machine, but we certainly didn't start here. This is the fifth shaper we've owned and we've built hundreds and hundreds of doors prior to owning this one. I'm going to start by removing the existing cutter and clearing the spindle, getting ready for the cope cutter. As I said in the other video, our cope cutter is made by Zuani. It's an Italian made cutter set for cope and stick. It's an insert cutter set, so you can swap the inserts and achieve different profiles. There's a slightly different layout for cope cuts versus sticking cuts. The other video shows this pretty clearly. Both require three washers or spacers per the specifications. The specifications are very useful as they show you exactly what configuration you need on the spindle and therefore the height to set the cutter stack to achieve the cope cuts. I have programmed our shaper to raise the head to the right height given the spacers underneath the cutter and the height of the sled which of course vaults the wood up over the cast iron work surface. The spindle height is relative to the work surface, so of course my height needs to take into account the total height that the wood is off the cast iron. Given the precision of this tooling and the precision of the Martin shaper in general, it's important to clean the spindle and the spacers and ensure that everything is sitting flat and true and dust free. Believe it or not, a chip can actually throw the cutter off enough to make a discernible difference in the quality of the cope and stick cut. Now that the cutter is mounted, it's time to put the sled on the surface. The sled is heavy. We keep it on a wheeled cart so we can easily wheel it over to the shaper and muscle it onto the machine. The sled bolts to the surface of the shaper. The key is to be able to mount the sled exactly in the same spot parallel to the fences of the shaper so that you know that everything is square and true. I do this with one, two, three setup blocks referencing the face of the shaper fences. So the first thing that I do is pull the faces forward so that the one, two, three blocks have a spot to register. On the shaper control panel, I touch the fence position and I type in 114 millimeters, setting the fence to where it needs to be to register the blocks. On the Martin shaper, when you hold down the power button, it activates the program that you've typed in. And in this case, moving the fence forward to 114 millimeters. At this point, the sled is still loose. So I put the one, two, three blocks down, ensure that the fences are snug. And once the one, two, three blocks are in place, I just tweak the whole sled up against the one, two, three blocks to ensure that they're exactly three inches and parallel to the faces of the fences. And then I tighten the bolts, securing the sled to the table. Now I have to remove the one, two, three blocks. 
What I don't want to do is just rip them out between the tight sled and the faces of the fences. So I tell the shaper to move the fences back to 110 millimeters, giving me plenty of clearance to sl simply slip the blocks out. Now I tell the shaper to use the program that I have pre-configured for the fence and spindle position for this cope set. I select the program and I hit enter and I hold down the button and watch the spindle and the fence move into the right position for this cutter in this configuration with this spacer set up and this sled. If you don't have a precision CNC shaper, that's perfectly fine. The next time you make copes on your shaper, cut yourself a template block and use that to achieve your setup. Now I simply slide the fence into position, ensuring that it's not going to get taken out by the cutter head, and clamp it down. And this concludes the setup. At this point, I'm able to do my cope cuts with safety and precision.